In this video, I'll be presenting a technique for improving the low light autofocusing speed and precision on the Nikon Z8 and Z9. Unlike most mirrorless systems, the Z cameras perform their autofocus operations with the lens stopped down to the shooting aperture, up to f5.6. For example, if you have a lens with a maximum aperture of 1.8 but are shooting at f4, the camera will autofocus at f4 rather than at 1.8. This decision by Nikon has both benefits and drawbacks. Benefits include avoiding focus shift, which is the tendency of some lenses to shift their focus plane at different apertures, meaning the perfect focus you required at 1.8 becomes slightly out of focus when the exposure is taken at a smaller aperture like f2.8. Stopping down also provides a full-time depth of field preview, allowing you to see what will be in focus. The drawback of this decision, and it's a big one, is that the Z's autofocus system receives much less light than competing systems which puts it at a handicap in low light situations, both for ambient light shooting and particularly in flash photography, where you focus at a low ambient light level, but shoot with strobes to achieve higher exposures. The technique I'm presenting in this video will allow you to override the stop down focus behavior and focus at whatever aperture you choose. It achieves this using a Nikon feature called recall shooting functions, which allows you to temporarily override certain shooting parameters by holding down a function button you assign to the role. I'll show how to use this feature to override the aperture the camera uses while focusing. I've set up a low light scene equal to approximately 2 EV. The camera is set to auto area autofocus with face and eye detection enabled with the subject's right eye selected. Here you can see the square of the eye is green, indicating I'm holding down the AF on button. Even though focus is acquired and the subject isn't moving, you'll notice the camera is constantly making small adjustments to the focus. You can see this in the crosshatch target I've set up to the side of the subject to make the focus adjustments more obvious. These constant adjustments are caused by low light conditions, which make it difficult for the on-sensor phase detect autofocus pixels to differentiate subject contrast from noise. To make this even clearer, I'll switch the camera to manual focus so that we can observe the camera's phase detection indication via its on-screen rangefinder, which is a Nikon feature that lets you see how the camera is evaluating the focus under the active autofocus point. Notice how the rangefinder is constantly flickering. It should be a solid dot, indicating an in-focus subject. The flickering means the camera thinks the subject is moving in and out of focus. The arrows next to the dot indicate which direction of focus needs to change to bring it back into focus. This is occurring even though the subject isn't moving. These constant changes in focus indication are what drives the camera to make continuous autofocus adjustments when in AFC mode, and those adjustments can both slow down focus acquisition and cause intermittent out of focus results for your photos. Let's see what happens if we change the aperture from 5.6 to f2 to let more light into the autofocus system. First I'll adjust the focus since the depth of field is narrower. With the focus now set, notice how the rangefinder is now a solid dot, indicating the camera is no longer detecting the subject going in and out of focus. With the focus set, I'll now close the aperture back down to 5.6 and note how the rangefinder dot is now flickering again, even though focus is still set. Again, this is the result of the camera's autofocus sensors being starved for light and making it difficult to distinguish noise from the subject when evaluating focus. And to prove this theory in actual practice, here I am holding down AF on again, this time with the shooting aperture set to f2, causing the autofocus system to also focus at f2. Notice how the focus hunting seen at f5.6 is gone. Now that we've established the benefit of focusing at larger apertures, let's put it into practice by configuring the camera to do so. I'll go to Settings, Controls, and then Custom Controls. First we pick which control we want to assign to the focusing feature. I'll choose AF on, although you may want to choose a different control to keep AF on in its standard focusing role. Scroll and select Recall Shooting Functions. Here we specify which camera settings we want to override whenever the assigned control is held down. First we set aperture. Choose whatever aperture you'd like to focus at. I'll pick f2, which is a third stop above the maximum aperture for the 50mm lens I'm using. Next we enable AF on. That way the focus system will be engaged whenever we hold down the control. Next we need to configure the camera so that the shutter doesn't trigger autofocus. In other words, the same as how you configure for back button focusing. Let's try it out. When I press AF on, indicated by the green box, the camera triggers the recall shooting function we set up, which changes the aperture at f2 and engages the autofocus. When I release AF on, the aperture is restored to whatever value it held prior, in this case f5. There's a momentary flash in live view whenever it switches back and forth. That's from the aperture opening and closing. I'll start taking photos. After focusing, I release the assign button and then immediately press the shutter. Don't wait until you see the flash in live view from the aperture changing, because live view operates with a lag. You don't need to worry about hitting the shutter before the camera has had time to restore the aperture. Your reaction time won't be fast enough for that to happen. The faster you press the shutter after releasing the function button, the less chance there is for your subject to move and then validate the focus you just achieved. 
And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, please feel free to post in the comment section.